Hi, I'd like to talk today about some very uh, simple processes that uh, I went through to try to understand how to get control of my thoughts. I was working in graduate school and going to class and I happened to have one of those epiphanous moments and looked at my consciousness and I saw that it was just jam full of garbage, really just uh, self-referential narrative and ending uh, of no particular note whatsoever. And I did not believe that we could possibly find that to be an acceptable way to live. I just felt there had to be something, some better way to do consciousness than to have it be like that. So I set about trying to find out, was there a way to do that, to deal with these thoughts? Could we somehow get control of them? So could we decide which ones were there or not there? And could we perhaps get rid of many of them? What I did was some very simple, uh, there was not much around on thoughts at the time, in this uh, manner. So I set, set about trying to do some very simple experiments. And one of the first ones I did, I just sat down and started to watch my thoughts and saw that there were in fact patterns to the way my thoughts operated. And um, what I did was just start drawing on a piece of paper. And we'll do this, you can do it yourself in a second here. And what we do is we look at, okay, you know, what, what's happening? We're thinking about one particular thing. And we think it very, we get very obsessed about that one thing for some long time frame. And then some other thought comes up about something other than that. We draw another line. We become fixated or holding on to that particular thing for a while. And then we find, boom, something else has happened. We've been pushed off onto another thought stream may even be a recursive stream that goes back into our original thought pattern. So we're going to go and draw on our leg, if you want to draw on your leg, or a piece of paper if you have one near, nearby. But just close your eyes and begin drawing along this uh, scheme here. And as you focus on one thing, draw one line. As it shifts, draw another line. Even if it comes back to the same thing, you've gone off to a third line. We'll talk later about how this thing worked out and uh, what you saw and what's possible. <clears throat> so we'll take about a minute doing that. You can close your eyes. I'll do a little Gita chant here just to uh, give your conscience something to process to be not concerned and to fill up the airspace. So about one minute and uh, do this drawing thing about what's happening with your thoughts as you trace them out. Naiva kinchet karo meti yukto manyata tatva vid Pashyan shrindvan sprishan jigran ashnan gachan svapan shvasan Pralapan visrajan gurunan unmishan nimmishan ape Indriyani indriyarte shuvartanta iti darayan Brahman yadaya karmani sangam chakva karoti ha Lipyate nasa papane padma patram eva ambasa. <coughs> and open your eyes. Now what did we find out by watching our thoughts? If you had something like this, I mean the idea being from this work that we're embarking on here is to see if we can change this pattern. I mean you may have found yourself something like this where you're quickly jagging back and forth between thought streams. Maybe even these were all of the same type, flashing back and forth between two individual types of thought streams on different subjects. Or you may have found you were focused on just one particular thing, because I obsessed with it. But what's possible, what, what happens with practice in the kind of things we do, is that you find yourself uh, aiming for something like this, where you do have spaces in between individual thoughts. You may still have these periods of going onto one stream, but in fact you do have breaks in between. What can happen as you go on longer about this thing is the thoughts become something like this. 
and it may even go till they become like this with time. And you may find, it's quite possible, <clears throat> as far as self-referential narrative thoughts, blah, blah, that your blah, blah is like this. Long periods with no blah, blah. This is possible. And what you can find out is if you trace this, you can see how things are now. And you will find as you begin doing some very simple exercises that this can take place. And as you progress, you may find yourself moving over here towards the right-hand side of the page. <clears throat> Second thing is trying to understand the nature of thoughts. You know, what are your thoughts composed of? So to look at this, we can do a very simple um, two buckets of thoughts. These buckets are what you're going to put your thoughts into that you have in one minute uh, duration. And this one bucket on the side here is thoughts that are about I, me, or my. Either implicitly obvious, or explicitly obvious, or implicitly just implied. They're somehow buried in the sense of this thing. These are the ones that are not I, me, my, based. Okay? So if it's really heavily encoded, autobiographical, emotionally involved, I mean my, go in this bucket. There are thoughts over here that are not heavily involved with I mean my, they're in this bucket. So we'll take a minute and you fill up those two buckets as they, as you count them. See what you come up with. Okay, take a second now, close your eyes and we'll wait for about, we'll go for about a minute here. I'll chant the Skeeter verse again so you can have something to occupy space. And count your thoughts, putting them in those two buckets. I mean my and not I mean my. Naiva kinchit karu meti yukto manyata tatvavit. Pashyan shrinvan sprishan jigran ashnan gachan svapan shvasan. Pralapan visrajan gurunnan unmishan nimmishan ape. Indriyani indriyarteshu vartanta iti darayan. Brahman yadaya karmani sangam chakva karoti ha. Lipyate nasa papane padma patram eva ambasa. And open your eyes. And see where your thoughts go. I mean my, did you have a lot of I mean my's? Or not very many? Do you have lots of not I mean my's? Or very few? Most people, I've done this with many groups, find out that in fact they have almost all I mean my thoughts. It really is all about you. It's all about me. Uh, this is where we occupy ourselves. So we've learned two things here. One, we can take these streams and possibly break them up. And two is that interesting place to go look for something to do would be to focus on I, me, my. Because almost all of our thoughts are I, me, my based. Another thing to look at in our third exercise here is going to be uh, what temporal period do we focus on? Where are we in time? Then we have three buckets. One bucket is about the past, thoughts about the past. One bucket is thoughts about the future. Another is thoughts only in the now. Now thoughts are not just recent thoughts about the present. They're thoughts right exactly in the now. People often believe something and I just thought about what just happened. That's a now thought. No, that's a past thought. You're just slightly past, but that's a past thought. So pure past, <clears throat> pure future, and pure now. And see what you have for these three buckets.
again we'll do the one minute thing close your eyes and I'll do the little chant again and you can fill up your three buckets and see in your own brain your own mind consciousness what happens with these three buckets Naiva kinchit karo meti yukto manyata tatva vit Pashyan shrinvan sparishan jigran ashnang gachan svapan shvasan Crawl upon bizrajan grunnan unmishan nimmishan ape Indriyani Indriyarteshu Vartanta Iti <coughs> Darayan Brahman Yadaya Karmani Sangam Chakva Karoti Yaha Lipyate Nasa Papane Padma Patra Eva Ambasa and open your eyes. What did you find looking at your past, now, and future thoughts? If you're like most people, you find that in fact the past and future thoughts uh, pretty much take up all the space. There are very few to almost no thoughts about now. Now is now. Now is happening now. Uh, and you're not someplace in the past or future. Um, this is what uh, happens very seldom for most people. You can, in fact, looking forward, get rid of past and future thoughts and really be just in the eternal present. This is possible. Well, this is the kind of work we do. So there's just now, now, now. No past, no future thoughts. No I mean my there. You may have none of those either. And you can break into one of these situations over here. Something else to ask yourself is, if you look at your thoughts, can you predict? my slant here. Can you predict your future thoughts? Just close your eyes now for just a short time and see if in fact you are successful in predicting what you're going to think, what your next ten thoughts are going to be. Close your eyes. Take a few seconds here. Do a little short chat, maybe. Naiva kinchit karo mirti yukto manyata tatpavit Ashan shrinvan sprishan jigran ashnam gachan svapan shvasan Ralapan bizrajan grunnan unmishan nimmishan ape Indriyani Indrarte Shuvartanta Iti Dharayan. What did you find out? Could you, in fact, successfully predict your next ten thoughts? Not by doing a mantra or something where you completely suppress thought, substitute something, but just by watching your normal functioning consciousness. Can you predict your future thoughts? Almost nobody can. So we've learned four interesting things here about our thoughts. Um, we can find out a lot about how we go forward in this process in looking at this. If we, it turns out, we know, cognitive neuroscientifically, if we can deconstruct the I, me, my, uh, we will in fact get rid of past and future thoughts, and we'll get rid of these I, me, my thoughts. We'll also get rid of self-referential desires and self-referential fears. We do this by some very simple inquiries. Uh, there are a couple who are the term most powerful, asking, where am I? Who hears? And when am I? Those are very powerful techniques. You don't use them as a mantra. You, just, you don't repeat them endlessly, parroting them. You're actually trying to find out with a lot of curiosity and uh, interest exactly where am I? 
I should be able to find myself. I mean, I spend all day long talking to myself back and forth. Where am I in there? Is there some place that I can locate where I am? The same thing with when am I? Does the same I show up for every relationship you're involved in? If you watch very carefully as you move through your day and you relate to person A, B, and C, do you see the same I there for all three situations? Or are they different eyes? As you feel your way back into this watcher that is always present back there, where can you find that she sits? Where does she reside? Can you find a place for her? And a good way to work with the senses, hearing is about the best sense to be able to work with. Who hears? This is an old classical Zen question. Who hears? If you watch sound come in, watch very carefully this hearing process. Can you see this arising of someone who comes in and hears that sound? Is that person necessary? Can you hear without this hearer? So that's our little introductory spiel here on kind of self-inquiry, meditative self-inquiry for non-dual awakening. Um, some simple things to remember to work with. Thank you.